We all know the current GPU market state where buying a good latest gen graphics card from either Nvidia or AMD for less than $400 still looks like a dream. Both companies usually start their GPU launch by revealing the most powerful GPUs followed by the slower ones. Now as we approach the launch date of the RTX 4070, more ADA GPUs are going to follow in the next months. That said, the company is officially launching the RTX 4070 for $600 on 13th April, followed by launching RTX 4060 GPUs in May. But the company is also supposedly launching the RTX 4050 right after 4060 GPUs this June. This was tweeted by Mega Size GPU, who has been pretty accurate with his leaks, and now that Nvidia is finally making its move to save the budget GPU market, it's actually not what you would have expected. Let's take a look at its specs and possible pricing, but before that make sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss any latest updates like this in the future. Now when I asked the leaker about the specs of the 4050, he said the card will have 6GB VRAM. Well, if this would have been the only downgrade from 8GB on the RTX 3050, I would still accept it, but the fact that the card is supposedly featuring a small 96-bit memory bus, it's already dead on arrival. This is indicating that the desktop RTX 4050 is going to feature almost the same specs as of the laptop RTX 4050, which is even slower than the laptop 3060. Considering that the RTX 3050 comes with 2GB more VRAM and on a bigger memory bus width of 128-bit, it is already ahead of the 4050 in specs. But things could even go worse if you think about its possible pricing. Let's assume if the RTX 4060 is priced at $400 to $450, Nvidia wouldn't mind pricing the 4050 for around $300 to $350. If this is the case, then 4050 no longer needs to exist in the market because we already have the 3050 currently priced between $250 and $300 with better specs as well as we have even better value cards like the RX 6600 and the ARC A750 for the same price. Now, if the 4050 is not faster than these GPUs, you can easily guess the value it would bring to the table, which obviously puts it in a place where it no longer seems to be an option at all. Simply going with a used RTX 3070 or 3060 would be much better than buying a brand new 4050 and the only thing that could save this card is if Nvidia prices it for around $200, which frankly is not likely to happen. Another interesting story comes from RGT, where he talks about the Zen 5. According to his sources, Zen 5 is going to bring massive improvements over Zen 4. He states that the Zen 5 will feature at least 20-25% higher IPC gains compared to the Zen 4, that means higher gaming and productivity performance. While the Zen 5 based CPUs will be similar to Ryzen 7000 CPUs in many aspects, there are some minor and major changes we could see. First of all, the Zen 5 CPUs will feature similar clock speeds to Zen 4 chips and the core count will remain the same for each CCD. The desktop Zen 5 code named Grey Knight Rage will utilize the big core design, while the Strix Point APUs will utilize the Big Little, which is the same design used for Phoenix 2 APUs I talked about in my previous video. Zen 5 chips will also feature bigger L1 and L2 caches, but the changes in L3 cache is not yet confirmed. However, the L3 cache which was supposedly rumored to be a separate chiplet might not be the case this time. Zen 5 CPUs will also feature up to 16 cores and 32 threads and will utilize 4 nanometer process node just like we know from AMD's roadmap. Good thing is that it will be perfectly compatible with AM5 socket as AMD previously announced that it is going to support the AM5 platform at least until 2025. If these reports are true then Zen 5 might pose itself as a big threat to Intel which is reportedly working on Arrow Lake CPUs to launch the next year because a 25% IPC improvement is even bigger than what we had going from Zen 2 to Zen 3 chips. Lastly, if you remember how the overclocker Derbauer killed a 7950X 3D by overvolting the CPU, another such report emerges from Igor's lab which conducted a similar test on a 5800X 3D. The difference here was that Igor was using an MSI B550 motherboard that allows overclocking through its MSI Center app. While the motherboard has its voltage settings disabled in BIOS, the MSI Center app was having a glitch that allowed him to increase the voltage to more than 1.3 volts. This resulted in an immediate death of the CPU just like their bower had. Tom's hardware tried to replicate the same and found out the MSI app is indeed permitting the users to increase the voltage up to 1.55 volts. And this is not only with MSI app least to say. Igor found out that even Gigabyte, ASRock and ASUS also allow overvolting on the 5800X 3D. This shows that even though AMD has disabled overclocking the 5800X 3D, motherboard manufacturers did not do their job properly that could result in death of many 3D CPUs if the users wanted to overclock their CPUs through manufacturers apps. 
I just want to say that if you own a 3D CPU, then do not try to overclock at all because 3D CPUs are not good at handling the heat due to poor heat dissipation. If you found this video informative then hit the like button and subscribe for more regular stories like this. Also make sure to turn on the notifications to get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one.